Hey folks, this is Mary. Welcome back to my channel. So it is tax day in America, April 15th. Although it's not tax day this year because of the pandemic, they have pushed back tax day. But April 15th, in my mind, always is tax day. You've heard of the Ides of March. This is the Ides of April. Beware the Ides of April. As most Americans don't enjoy this day. Um, although I think many Americans have already filed their taxes. I, however, am not one of them. So I must get cracking on my taxes. But anyway, that is not what this video is about. This video is about ink. And today's ink is Noodler's Antietam. A um, very orangey brown, reddish brown, rusty brown, orangey color. Um, so I've already done my swatch here. So let me just write the name on here. Antietam. And you may or may not be familiar, but um, Antietam is the name of a Civil War battlefield. And the Battle of Antietam, I don't remember the date of the battle, but I do know it was the bloodiest day in American history. Almost 23,000 people were killed, wounded, or went missing on that day. So it's quite appropriate that this ink looks very much like dried blood. It's it's commem commemorating a very sad day in American history. Uh, much like Noodler's, um, the name just flew out of my head. Uh, Noodler's uh, Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square. Um, it's, it's also a reddish ink, which of course is commemorating the crushing of the Students' Rebellion in Tiananmen Square in China. So, Oh dear, oh my, okay. <laughs> that was interesting, where did that come from? Yeah, my go has just been spitting ink everywhere lately. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's what it looks like right there. <laughs> there there's a lovely smear of ink for us. Jeez, okay, well, moving on, moving on. Whoops. All right. I probably told you before that I have plastic bags draped all over my lights in a poor man's light diffuser. And um, they generally work until they fall off and then they don't do a thing. So I shall try to do my little swatch here and not get my hand in this ink. Although it's, well, it's dry. So that's okay. So today is four. 15. I'm getting better at that sideways writing. Alrighty, I'll just move over a little bit. So, um, you know, I pulled out a bunch of different swatch cards to compare with this ink, but I don't know if I pulled out Ancient Copper. Because this is looking very much like ancient copper to me. So um, we will find out shortly when we get to the swatch card portion of the program. So this is Antietam. And I'm just looking to see what I've put on the other pages. This is my Twisby Go with a broad nib. And I swear, y'all, I cannot... I cannot write a straight line on these dots. I just can't do it. My my brain just wants to go up the dots. I, it, it's I it's not level. I can't write a level line on it. Okay. Whew. I'm just all out of sorts. I don't know what's going on. Oh, and I forgot to mention, my goodness, I knew I was forgetting something. This sample was sent to me by pen friend Casey. So that's where that came from. So thank you, Casey. Thank you for sharing your noodly goodness with me. All 
All right. Ooh. Yep, just having trouble with a straight line. That's okay. Lines don't need to be straight. In fact, lines are hardly ever straight. Only man-made lines. Well, that's not true. I think the um, fault lines in crystals like diamonds are generally straight. Not fault lines, the facet lines, you know what I mean. So there are some straight lines in nature, just not that many. It looks like it's drying pretty fast. So we'll do, oh, let me redip. Pass number two. And a bit more drying. And I have to tell you, since I've been watching Sarah Katie's videos where she talks about space, I've just become obsessed with space. I've always liked space, but I've been lot watching a lot more videos about it now. And man, quasars. I just keep watching videos about quasars. They are so fascinating. And completely, I shouldn't say completely, um, mostly unknown. Mostly unknowable. They're, they're unfathomable cosmic bodies. I don't know. So I've, I've been reading all this stuff about them and I think over the years there's been different research and some of it's conflicting and we're just not sure what they are, where they are, what they do, all that stuff. But I did read something that said that a quasar was a black hole that was actively consuming material. It, it was a, a supermassive black hole that was actively consuming material. So, just like all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares, all quasars are supermassive black holes, but all supermassive black holes are not quasars. And they theorize that um, the, center of the center of every galaxy has a supermassive black hole in it. Sometimes those supermassive black holes become quasars and a star can or not a star a star what am I talking about oh. and Gus tells me that I'm boring you guys so I need to stop talking about this <laughs> he's giving me the funniest look he's like stop talking about space this is not the space channel okay so if you want to hear more about quasars I can refer you to some fascinating videos but let us keep our focus on the pens and the inks Okay, so here is my Midori notebook, and here is today's ink on the Midori MD paper, and it has some nice shading, and these, these Noodler's inks are really, really nice shaders, so shading is your thing. I think I've said this before, Noodler's might be your ink, and wow, just look at all these beautiful shading inks. I love them, and yesterday's ink was just gorgeous. Uh, I love it. Okay. Okay, Gus is telling me to hurry up. I don't know what's going on with him. He um he went to doggy daycare for the first time today, so I think he's a little full of himself. He was the master of the playground or something. Okay. He loves other dogs. People cease to exist when he's around other dogs. Alrighty, so this is April 15th. And since this ink is named after something that reminds us of war, I thought it would be appropriate to have a quote about peace. Oops, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Something fell off my desk. I don't know. It's probably rolling into the black hole under the couch as we speak.
Well, my goodness. If I could spell, I would be dangerous. It's not that I can't spell. If I could write, I would be dangerous. Okay. So, again, this paper is showing the lovely shading of the ink. It's, it's looking kind of like a, a burnt orange, sort of. It's very orangey. It's really, really dark orange. And there is some very nice shading. I haven't noticed any sheen. And it's it's a very um it's a very kind of thin ink. It's kind of a transparent ink. Um, which is what I meant to point out on the calendar page. Let's back up here. I've noticed this about several of the inks. See how you can see the dots through the ink right there? But quite a few of these are very opaque. I mean, even the lighter colors, sometimes you can't see the dots. Like that. Cactus fruit eel. You can barely see his dots. So I just thought that was interesting. That Texas blue bonnet is quite opaque. Okay, so yes, I just wanted to mention that about today's ink. It's very transparent looking. Okay. So, I think our little, let me get this in the camera here, I think our little hash marks have dried, so let us put some water on there. It never feels like it's enough water, but I certainly don't want to drown the page because this paper does not really like water that much. Oh, I'm supposed to be watching the clock. Yes, I'm watching the clock. And I am seeing some ink movement. It looks like it's dissolving a bit. So, anyway, was I done talking about quasars? I'm sure I could go on about them for a long time. But um, I've, I've seen some very cool space videos lately. Um, but as much as I enjoy space, I enjoy learning about it safely from the atmosphere of Earth. <laughs> I don't think I want to venture out into space on my own anytime soon. All right. Okay, so we did get quite a bit of ink coming off on the paper towel. And let's take a look at this. Yes, the water did lift quite a bit of the ink. It's still legible, as most of the Noodler's inks have been, but... I would say it, it took away at least 50% of the saturation and um, kind of spread it around a little bit. There's kind of a orangey puddle around the hash marks. And that was just me gesturing emphatically with the pen. <laughs> that had nothing to do with the water dust. Okay, so, and let's also look at our little saturation swabs here. So, kind of a burnt orange and then kind of a dark red and then moving into reddish brown so that's interesting it's a very pretty ink i keep saying i don't like oranges but i don't think that's true anymore <laughs> i think i have learned to appreciate oranges i guess i like oranges with some character not just orange but you know habanero something with a little pizzazz a little visual interest. Okay, so here is our card for today's ink again. And let me zoom in a little bit so we can see it pretty well. All right, and I was looking to see if I had um, ancient copper. Let me see, let me see. Oh my goodness. I don't. Where is my ancient copper? Oh dear. Hold that thought. Well, I can't seem to find my ancient copper swatch card anywhere, so I'm just going to make a new one. Here is my giant bottle of ancient copper. And I think I got this over at the Norfolk Stationery. I think this was one of my first ever ink bottle purchases. Um, but I had seen it on a bunch of 
videos online and I just knew that I would love this color and I do so I certainly haven't regretted jying, jying, buying the jumbo dye mine bottle because usually I have the little 30 milliliter bottles which are plenty big enough like um, oh here's one here's this little guy over here here's some Oxford blue and that's that's quite a bit of ink I mean you can get a lot of pen fills out of 30 milliliters and this big one is what, 80 milliliters? So it's a lot of ink and I'll probably never use all of it, but I still don't regret the purchase. So this is Diamine Ancient Copper. Always me always makes me think about those um those beautiful old pennies that are all patinaed and you know, somebody finds them in the bottom of their pocket or something. I don't know. I like pennies. They're fun little coins, even though everybody wants to get rid of them. Oh, such a pretty color. And I don't know why the ink is breaking right there. I, I guess the card must have something on it. The oil's from my hand or something. Feeling a little bit dry there at the end. Let's see. He's running a little bit. He's running reluctantly. So we will set him aside to dry for a moment. In the meantime, we will compare our ink of the day with some other cards. Let's see. Okay. Back to Antietam. Let's who else looks good my goodness who picked out these cards <laughs> these are terrible look at this that what what was I thinking that is terrible oh my goodness I think I picked these cards out in the dark I don't know Whew. okay here is Karub de Chipre which is brown so I don't know Noodler's Antietam is brownish Mm. There is Oxblood. That is a deep dark red. Much darker than Antietam. And here is Diamine Deep Dark Red. Also much darker than our ink of the day. There is Sailor Okuyama. That is much pinker, I would say. Much more red. This is definitely in orange territory. There is Diamine Syrah. Again, falling into that kind of pinkish burgundy territory. Here is Robert Oster Aster Kieserot, which is definitely looking like that kind of brownish orange color. I know that's supposed to be red, but it's not just plain old red, it's red with some character. Here is Faber-Castell Garnet Red, looking much lighter and more pink like some of these inks. And yeah, what was I thinking? I don't know why this card is in the pile. Amethyst de Laurel. It's a lovely ink, but not red. Let's see, Three Oysters Delicious Red Wine, looking very purple, very purple. Here is Jacques Urbain Rouge Hematite. A bright, bright red. Wow, much brighter than any of these guys. And here is Monteverde Napa Burgundy, which is looking very burgundy. And again, pinker than Antietam. There is Noodler's Black Swan and English Roses, which I always think looks like dried blood, but I guess it's more of a burgundy color. It's actually kind of brownish. Hmm, and there is Diamine Merlot. I've got to have some better matches than that. My goodness, let me go look for some more cards. I think this is our closest match so far. Okay, hold on, I'm going to go look for some more cards. Gosh, I was just thinking we did a bunch of oranges the other day, so I know I have some orange cards around here somewhere. Okay, so now we are moving into orange territory. Here is Diamine Pumpkin very light 
And for some reason, I have two of these. So here's another diamine pumpkin, which is looking darker, but still much too light. And here is our Noodler's Habanero, which we did the other day. And it's a darker orange, but it's just not the same tone as that one. And again, I've got another, <laughs> another Noodler's Habanero. I wanted to do the drip on this one. So it's looking very vibrant, but still too bright. Let's see. And speaking of bright, here is KWZ Grapefruit which is looking kind of red next to Antietam. It's making Antietam look much more brown. And let's see, Apache Sunset, very light. Twisby Orange, very light. Here is Colorverse Monument Valley, which is a gorgeous shader, by the way. But it's, it's a weird combination of like yellow and brown. I mean, it's, it looks like an orange ink, I mean, on the camera, it looks orange, but that shading, it really looks yellow and brown. It's so weird, but so pretty. So this is closer to the tone of the ink, but it's just not nearly as dark. And speaking of burnt orange, here is Faber-Castell burnt orange. So again, much too light. Here is Monteverde fire opal, which is darker and closer, I think, but this is still more brown. So this isn't nearly dark enough of an orange to match this. This is too brown to be this one. And then this one is looking darker and redder. Okay, let's see how ancient copper is looking. It should be about dry now. So, I'm thinking they look pretty close. What do you think? I think ancient copper is a little browner and this is a little more reddish orange. But they are they are pretty close. Hmm. Again, diamine ancient copper is one of my favorite colors. But Antietam is very nice too. And honestly, I kind of avoided it because of the name because it's you know, such an unhappy event, but it's such a pretty color. It's very nice. It looks very smooth compared to ancient copper. Hmm. Ancient copper does look like it has some, some something or another going on here around the edge, like a little halo maybe. I wouldn't exactly say sheen, but right around the edges here, it's got a little something going on. And Antietam is, is just a shader. Can we see the shading in this? Not very much. But on the other papers, it, it was a very nice shader. So they're pretty close. Hmm. And then Aster Keys are Rot. He's just a little bit redder, but the same kind of saturation, I think. Very interesting. Interesting color. Interesting class of colors. Alrighty, well, that is our ink for today. So thanks again to Miss Casey for sharing her ink with me. And thank you to you for sharing your time with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do me the honor of subscribing to my channel. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.